by questions from the audience. We've been talking a lot up here. Yeah. I'm surprised nobody has mentioned The Stand oh, by Stephen King. Oh, yeah. Yes. I love that. I love that choice is and also needful things because devil sets up a nice little store mm -hmm. has whatever the one thing you've always wanted he doesn't ask a price he's just like oh just do this little favor for me <laughs> it rolls into people start dying and the whole town starts going yeah. any questions I just don't think, like what she was talking about, I don't think you can actually take even a, that's just something you can't do without a horror thing or a horror genre. You know, those types of things are, by nature, going to freak people out, and they should. Well, the interesting thing was, I was re in high, I went to a Mennonite high school. Catholic high school to the end, 10th degree. Um, I was reading that, and my religion teacher was like, why are you reading that? I'm like, the story in this is supernatural. We're fight God, you know, devil's in here, and God, people have to make a choice and trying to find a way to redeem themselves, and you know, to resist the temptation of the one thing they've always wanted. Yeah. And you can't do that with fairies. Well, you could do that with fairies, but it's a lot easier with horror. <laughs> yeah, and, and you raise a very good point about you know not really being able to, to accomplish it uh, outside of horror. Uh, a lot of the complaints that, that I hear when uh, I talk to people about, um, I hesitate to say Christian entertainment, but I mean, for lack of a better phrase, uh, a better label, uh, we'll call it that, um, is that you know they, they too often seem afraid to touch um, the, the sin nature that we have. They, they're afraid to deal with it. They're afraid to, to look at the darkness that does exist in the world. Or they want to treat it with kid gloves and, no, it's not really so bad. It's not really so bad. Then why is the world, you know, going the way it's going? Why, why is there such a need for God if, if, if it's not really so bad? Um, so, yeah, I, I think that uh, if we can step over those boundaries a little bit and, you know, not go so far as to say, oh, you know, look at how pretty evil is in, in a sense that we're trying to glamorize it, you know, in, in the eyes of people, although, of course, the devil will make it look pretty to people and may want to portray that um, as, a, as a lie he spins, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not about... Um, well, let's let's see how many creative ways we can find to uh, kill people and have their blood spread out all over the ground and we'll call it a movie. You, you know, still, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, even Saul, though. Well, I I do a uh, I just recently started a, a website called Righteous Recommendations, where I uh, I examine the spiritual content of uh, movies. I, yeah, I talk about general things and, and stuff as well, but. I, I try to focus on the spiritual aspects, and I have actually pulled some uh, surprisingly deep spiritual connotations out of uh, at least the early Saw movies, mm -hmm. not necessarily the later ones, because they kind of went downhill uh, pretty quickly. But I saw the first one, just Harry Ellis. Yeah. I was, I was actually really impressed with, uh, with the second one. The second one's my favorite by far. And, you know, it may go back to what Tracy was talking about earlier. You know, I was looking for positive spiritual elements within the movie, and therefore I found them. I saw something that I could take out of that that was positive for me. It was a positive mes message that I could then take and, and talk about with other people to share it. Uh, and, you know, maybe not everybody gets that. Maybe people are so turned off by the, the, the blood, the torture, and the pain that... that uh, uh, the Saw movies uh, seem to necessitate, and um, that anything that's deeper than that can't really get through because they're you know they're kind of turned off before that any kind of message gets through. And I, and I tend to think that their stories could have been a lot more powerful if they had dialed down on the torture point. Um, but so if it was shown on broadcast TV, it would be about a half hour long. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Well, well, but I think that there's also, for instance, yeah. we talk target market, you know, there, there are different targets and certain things aren't going to get through, you know, like just they aren't going to watch the torture anymore, but then certain people will. Um, you know, I do think when you're dealing with any type of darkness, there will be people who, either because of past experiences, can't read your stuff, or because of fears, they won't, and that's just how the cookies are going to fall, I guess. Um, to me, that's all.
always been the Roman approach. Before I was a Christian, I had an orange belt on, you know, punk rock, stuff like that, and became a Christian and thought, you know, now out of all these possibilities, you know, here are my entertainment possibilities. Everyone else, no, it's not that way. All of it is made and owned by God. We don't have to avoid something or fear something because it's evil. No, I mean, we can go there and make it ours. Right, right, we can, yeah. I just noticed that we, uh, we've only been, it's called religion and horror, and we've only been talking about Christian influences. Um, I thought, thought I'd go ahead and share this with you. Uh, a very, very classic movie is based off a Jewish tradition, Jewish story, and that's Frankenstein, uh, the story of the golden. Did you story?